homeschool styles. So let me start by saying you do not have to be married to any one particular homeschool style. At the end of the day, it's up to you to decide how you want and need to tailor your child's education based on how they learn and how you teach. So today we're gonna to talk about what the most common styles of homeschooling are, what style we started with, the style that we're transitioning to, how we're gonna transition, and the challenges I think we may face along the way. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Thank you so much for stopping by. I would love to have you be a part of the community. First on the list, what are the common styles of homeschool? So there's actually like seven different homeschool styles that are pretty common. You've got Montessori, uh, classical, unschooling, eclectic, school at home, and we also have Charlotte Mason and unit studies. Now, I'm not going to go into grave detail about what each and every one of these styles are and who they best fit, the pros and cons and all of that. However, I will leave a very detailed link down in the description box for you to check out. This article is probably one of the best that I've come across in regards to that information. I will say, whatever homeschool style you start with does not have to be the one that you stick with for the long call. I have found that different seasons of life call for different approaches. For instance, when we were in transition, I actually found that the school at home approach was actually the easiest way for me to get things done. It allowed me to just purchase a box curriculum and just go through the lessons each and every day. Granted, I did discover later down the road that that just was not the approach that I wanted to stick with. We grew bored of it and it just, it wasn't what I was looking for for our homeschool. So what style did we start with? We actually started out with the school at home approach using the Good and the Beautiful's curriculum for language arts, math, science, and handwriting. So all of our subjects. Not only did I find that Micah was getting bored with how the curriculum was with how the curriculum was set up, I also found that it just didn't fit his learning style. It fit my teaching style, but it didn't fit his learning style. And me personally, I'm not planning on using any of these homeschooling styles hardcore, but just based on what I've learned about each of these styles, I can say that they each do offer a little something that fits our family core beliefs, that fits our learning styles, teaching styles, and what our end goal is for our home. School. brings me to my next point what are we transitioning to so uh, if you've seen my 2020 2021 curriculum video if not I'll link it up here somewhere but if you've seen that video I'm using a mixture of out-of-the-box curriculum unit studies and a little bit of DIY material this year so we're really kind of using a mixture of approaches this year to different subjects I really do feel like this year is all about us finding our homeschool style and what's going to work for our family. First year seemed to be about just getting our feet wet, getting started, which is why we started the way that we did. And then the second year I feel like was more so of us getting rid of the dead weight, so to speak. So going through a little bit of de-schooling and starting a little bit of unschooling. And then this third year, I feel like we're going to begin to really find what, what is going to work for us. So how am I going about this whole transition and trying to find our style and, and all of that? Number one on my list is filling our homeschool library with books that not only feed curiosities that are already there, but help spark interest in other areas as well. For so long, I focused on the fact that Michael is interested in animals and things like that. So we have plenty of those types of materials, but now I feel like we need to branch out a little more, start bringing in some some other material that's going to help him to branch out. The second thing is to stay flexible. So with us saying different things out, I wanna keep in mind that some, some things just may not work. And if they're not working, then okay, let's see why they're not working. Try another approach using that same thing. And if it's still not working, then okay, let's do away with it and let's try something different. So staying flexible. Number three is try to make sure that I'm keeping my approach individualistic and not trying to find a style that's going to work for all my kids. I think that's going to help me to pinpoint what approach is going to work specifically for my So essentially I'm trying to keep in mind that education, my approach to this needs to be on an individual scale and not on a general one. And then lastly, but certainly most essential, at least for me, is praying for wisdom, softness of heart and direction as we transition into finding whatever style is going to work best for us. Large challenges I may face along the way. Number one, I think is going to be the fact that I may be tempted to buy all the books. One of my favorite things about 
homeschooling is the fact that I get to fill our homeschool library with all these books for our kids and create just this environment that fosters a love of reading and a love of learning. And number two, I feel like I'm going to have to figure out a way to overcome that feeling, that overwhelming feeling that can come from having so many subtopics to study under one general topic. So I have created a unit study template to help me with this. So it's just kind of like a guide for me to pre-plan for all of our unit studies so that I know exactly what subtopics we're going to study, what materials, resources, books, videos, and all of that we will need for those unit studies. Just something to kind of give me a parameter so that I'm not trying to venture too far out. Tell me down in the comments, have you found a homeschool style that works well for you and your family? If so, I want to know what it is. Do you use a mixture of styles or do you stick to just one? That's actually it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, if you're not yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that red button and turn on the bell notifications as well so that you're actually alerted when I upload new content. You guys have a great rest of the day.